Hey everyone and welcome to another video guys and finally the day has come. Coach Curtis is making a video directed towards bronze and silver players. This has been a long awaited video. A lot of people have messaged me saying, Curtis, how come you don't coach bronze and silvers? How come you don't make content for us? Why are you ignoring us? Are we really that bad? Do we smell what's wrong with us? And you know what? I just haven't really got around to it and I probably should have made this video a long time ago, um, but it's here. I apologize for that, but this is it, right? This is the only video I'm gonna make on my channel that is directed towards bronze and silver players. And for those of you who have watched the film Magical, they will understand that little reference called the this is it uh, little reference, but um, I'm excited. There's a lot of stuff to dive in here. And then the advice I'm gonna give probably isn't what you expected. Um, I've spoken to a lot of bronze and silver players and I'm quite confident in what I'm saying and what I'm about to say in this video. So strap yourselves in, this is gonna be a very interesting video. And where we're gonna kick it off is taking the game seriously. Now just a little question. I want you guys to think back to when you learned how to drive. When you were learning how to drive for the first time, how serious were you? Like your mentality heading into you know the first time you sat in the car, you got your mom or your dad next to you, or your sister or your brother, whoever it was, or even a driving instructor, how serious were you? How, how serious were you taking the entire experience? And if it was anything like me, I was shitting myself. I was like, holy shit, this is, this is crazy. I mean, if I screw up here, I can damage myself. I can, I'm gonna destroy my mom's car. Um, I, I don't wanna hurt my mom or dad sitting in the passenger seat. This is some crazy shit. So I knew whether it was intuitively or tacitly or just I understood that this was a difficult, dangerous and complex task. And for those of you who just think, oh, you know, driving's easy. Driving in the rain at night on a highway or a freeway or doing those reverse parallel parks, all that crap, that is, it's a very difficult skill, especially at the beginning. And it takes hundreds of hours to even get remotely comfortable driving in all of these differing conditions. So during these sessions where you're actually learning how to drive, you maintain a lot of intensity, a lot of focus, you schedule time aside, you know, whether you're at school or university, you schedule this time aside to learn. But most important, the most important thing, something that we just completely, we never talk about, is that we inherently respect the art of driving. We respect it as a skill, but we respect its difficulty and how in depth it is and how dangerous, complex and difficult it is. We, we actually respect the art of driving. Now, the interesting thing is guys, and this is something I've been thinking about quite a lot recently, is that the exact same level of respect is needed for the game of League of Legends. The game is bloody hard. And for those of you who've really climbed and put the time into the game, you realize how hard this game is. League of Legends is not Call of Duty. League of Legends is not Fortnite. You can't afford to go on after work, after school, grab a beer, sit in your computer, let's play one ranked game for one hour and piss off and go to bed or watch Netflix. You're not just, you're just not gonna improve that way. You gotta have a respect for the art of League of Legends. You gotta have a respect for the game because the game, it's very unforgiving. It's just not, a, it's not a casual for fun game, especially if you wanna to get to gold. And I think because of our experiences playing a lot of other games, in our mind, it's like, it's just a game. And I can just sit there, like you play COD, you slowly get better, you get your prestige in COD, or I don't know what it's called in Fortnite, and you just get to whatever rank you want to get to. It's just It just happens over time. This just isn't the case with League of Legends. So a lot of people, I've seen these accounts that are stuck in bronze and silver for seasons upon seasons, and I'm always thinking to myself, do they just, do they just fail to respect the game? I don't know. It's a question that I think a lot of you guys that are in bronze and silver should ask yourself. How seriously are you taking the game? Do you have a, do you respect the difficulty? Something that you guys need to ask yourself. And a neat little tip, I've spoke to a silver player who got gold and he was saying how in order to increase his seriousness and intensity and the amount of you know respect he had for the game, he actually got into the review and even though he had no idea what the hell he's looking for, right? He didn't know the consequences of his actions. He doesn't know why he was making mistakes. He doesn't really understand the theory of the game at all, but simply just loading up the review and getting into it and taking a brief look at your desk for like five minutes, it actually increased his intensity and increased his seriousness, the process. And for those of you who haven't really reviewed in Silver or Bronze 4, have a go. Maybe it does increase the seriousness for you and that sometimes that's all it needs for you to have that little bit more intensity, which increases your level of play. Now, I want to talk a little bit about champion pools and champion mastery. And due to this inherent disrespect for the difficulty of the game, 
I see people either one, they don't play one champion, they have a champion ocean, or they play multiple different roles, or they play incredibly hard champions. They play like Azir and Zoe, and I just see some ridiculous stuff, like absolutely ridiculous stuff. And um, I want to use an analogy to describe how important it is just to play one champion and hopefully be a simple champion. So... When you're becoming, say you want to be a carpenter, for example, you need to know how to use a hammer. And the way I interpret League of Legends is that a champion is your tool. It is your tool to learn the craft of League of Legends. So if you're a carpenter, you might understand the theory of how to build a roof. But if you don't understand how to use a hammer, then it doesn't mean shit because you can't execute on what you know. So the way you've got to view it is that learn the champion first and then the champion will allow you to learn the game. But if you dabble in like a trillion different tools, you try to you, you pick up a different tool every day, or you pick up a different champion every second week, you're not actually going to allow yourself or give yourself the time or freedom to learn the game itself. We must learn the tool, and then the tool will allow us to learn the craft. Very important to understand. Now, it's okay because in the future, let's just say we don't really, really enjoy our champion. There's, maybe we really love Silas, or we really love... Zoe or whatever champion it is that we love, we can pick them up in the future. And what people fail to understand is that if you choose to learn this champion now, sometimes it can ingrain such poor habits that you will never be able to be good at that champion again because you'll just you won't understand the identity of the champ or the identity of the champion will be so just like screwed because you've lost so many games with it. It won't even matter. You actually ruin your experience with and you ruin your relationship with the champion. But also sometimes you can actually make yourself so bad at the game by losing all of these games and trying to overcomplicate, do all this crazy thing to win that you might not even ever climb to the rank you want to climb to with that champion. You know, you will probably be stuck there forever. And I've seen people being stuck at bronze and silver for, for like six seasons. I've seen it. It's possible. So we must learn and learn the game through a very simple champion first that one champion, and then we can pick up whatever champ you want when you're in like high gold or something like that. We can do that or low plat ideally, okay? Now, a common misconception as well is that the easy champions just aren't good. You know, I don't want to learn a champion that I'm just going to have to give up in the future. No, that's just not the case whatsoever. If you think about some of the easiest mid champions, like Annie, Annie is legitimately a very good champion. And we oftentimes see um, challenger one tricks and he challenger one tricks all the way, you know, in in every region. It's possible to climb to challenger with this champion. The champion is like genuinely good. It's the exact same for a lot of these other simple champions, whether it's Seraphine, Diana, Malzaha, Victor. And there's plenty more. So please don't get confused. This is a very simple step. Uh, and and a, another common excuse I actually get as well is, Curtis, I just get bored. I just get bored of playing this champion. I just don't have fun playing this champion or... It's just something around just being bored. And a lot of the time, I, I, I don't know how to answer this question. I'm like, well, what's important to you? Is playing, the, is playing like 17 different champions more fun than climbing through the ranks and actually learning the game itself? It, it just depends on you. At the end of the day, there's no shortcut. You've got to put in the work. So, I mean, that's, that's on you guys at the end of the day. Please don't complain if you're stuck in silver and bonds and you don't follow this step. Next one is here is Champion Mastery Continued. Okay, there's more benefits of Champion Mastery. One of the other benefits here is that it actually allows you to shift your attention towards what other champions do in the game. And this is a massive part of the League of Legends experience. So again, tying back to the, um, the analogy of learning one champion and how it allows you to learn the game. When you play 60, 70, or 80 games on one champion, what happens is that certain things become muscle memory. You don't need to think about your ranges, your mana costs, how much damage you deal, what you know, how you can play team fights, that sort of thing. It's just like kind of muscle memory. So you're, you're, over time, what actually happens is that your attention is actually getting shifted to other areas in the game. So just in terms of the mental stack, what used to take up 50% of your mental stack is now only taking 10, 15%. And with that freed up 35, 40%, whatever it is, you can direct that towards, oh, interesting. That's how that other person is positioning. Oh, they've actually used that flash or they've used their ultimate or whatever it is. You're actually able to see more, more things from what the enemy champions are doing. And then also on top of this, you actually get to learn more about what other champions do in general, what their identity is. And this is just something that will happen naturally without even you realizing it simply by having champion mastery with your, you know, with that one champ.
The other little added benefit here is that you are able to better understand power spikes. If you better understand power spikes, it gives you a very easy to execute game plan or reference point to be able to make plays. It's like, okay, I'm playing Annie. As soon as I get my lost chapter and my Sorks, I can do X. I'm playing Diana. As soon as I get my alternator, I can do X. It, it doesn't matter what the power spike is, but it just gives you some form of reference point because now you know, okay, I know how this item feels. And when I can, when I get this item, it allows me to do X, right? And a lot of people feel confused in a game. They don't really know what they should be doing. And power spikes are a very great way of giving you a bit of direction. Third one here is better understand what sort of fights your champion wants. Um, a big problem I see in Silver and Bronze as well with these players is that their skirmishing is, you know, obviously not up to scratch. And this is a long-term process. This is something you always improve all the way up until Challenger. But the thing is, when you get a lot of champion mastery, you eventually, whether it's intuitively if you're playing with intensity or, or just through sheer knowledge, you understand what sort of fights your champion wants or how your champion should operate in a fight. So if you're playing in a mobile mage like Annie, intuitively, just through painful experiences or just playing with intensity, you're going to realize, hmm, I probably shouldn't come in from the flank here or, or come in from the side. I probably need to stand behind my front line. So just very basic stuff around what your champion can or can't do in a fight will really level up your skirmishing. And again, this will just come through through sheer champion mastery. And no, there are levels to champion mastery. You know, yes, step number one is just understanding what your abilities do. Then the next step is understanding like the strength of what you max and why you max it. And there's like levels to it. And I think a lot of people get confused. They think that they understand a champion very well when they don't, when they've only played the champion like 20, 20 times. No, there are parts of the champion, like ex how your champion wants to play fights. Um, what champions really threaten your champion or what champions your champion does very good into or just like very specific details that will pay dividends in skirmishes and team fights. Now, I want you guys, to, this is probably one of the most important slides of this video actually and um, it's going to sound a little ridiculous and I'm aware of this, it does sound ridiculous but I can't escape it and it's something that has really bugged me and... Um, no matter how much I try to avoid this issue, it, it just it just keeps coming up again, okay? Without exaggeration, every, I'm literally saying it, every, every silver and bronze review that I have ever done in the last two years, they have literally beaten themselves. And you may ask, well, what does that mean? What, what does that mean by, by beating themselves? And what that basically means is that they are trying to force plays or do things that they don't necessarily need to do, where they are literally giving an opportunity for the enemy to make a play. They are beating themselves, like running into a, an electric fence. And this is a very big mental hurdle for a lot of people to get over. And I've mentioned this over and over and over again within my channel, but the loser's game versus winner's game mentality. And I, I'm not going to explain it here. If you're really, if you don't know what I'm talking about here, the loser's game versus winner's game um, philosophy, go onto Google, type loser's game versus winner's game. But TLDR, when you are playing in bronze and silver and gold and even in platinum, all you have to do is relax and the enemy will present opportunities for you to capitalize on because no one's good enough at the game yet. They don't know how to play the game. So they're literally going to they're going to hand you opportunities on a platter. But when you're in diamond plus, you can't afford to have that mentality. You got to make game winning plays. And um, for example, I did a, I did a uh, bronze review recently. And literally at minute 3, I think it was minute 3 within the game, he flash ignited onto the enemy for a solo kill. And I think missed a solo kill whatever it was. And every time his flash was up, he was flashing aggressively, trying to barely shoving out the way, just roaming around the map, trying to make all these crazy plays because they feel as though they need to be the carry. They feel as though they need to do something special to climb out of bronze. And just that word carry, just like it penetrates and just lives within that ethos within, you know, climbing through um, bronze and silver. And it couldn't be further from the truth. So look, I'm going to give you a few pieces of advice here. Please just value your resources very high. Focus on your CS and just don't die. And I hate saying this. I, I really, really hate saying this actually. Just don't die. But I don't know how else to say it. Value your life. And if you can simply remove deaths, play relatively defensively, farm well, take good resets, you will be in a completely different position. You're going to get to that 15-minute team fight. And you'll be surprised about the results that will follow.
okay? And like I said here, focus on your CS, take good quality resets, play off your power spikes, get very basic wards down, especially when you walk up, and punish the enemy when they walk up to CS. Please avoid the following. Don't flash aggressively. Basically, if you're constantly flashing forwards and not using it defensively, unbind it from your keyboard, straight up. Just don't use it aggressively. Simply removing the ability for the enemy to punish you from the sense of, the sense of like, okay, instead of flashing under the tower or flashing for some crazy five-man ultimate, whatever it is, just don't use it and just relax and allow them to come into you. Don't roam after every play. Stop heavy trading over and over again without any information about the jungle's location. Stop fighting with 2,000 gold and no ultimate. Just like really, again, these are things that you're opting into, a player is opting into because they feel as though they need to do this to win. And again, I, I don't know how else to put this, guys. And it, it it's a it's a problem. It's a it's a really big problem. I'm, and guys, I'm not trying to put you down. Again, I I, I want to be careful with the way I'm 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 you know the message I'm trying to push here. I don't want you guys to all be very defensively play super super defensive and sit under your tower. No, it's more about the mentality of just be patient. Accept reality that you don't need to roam after every wave. You don't need to do some crazy shit and get a solo kill. They will give you an opportunity. Now, the other little, uh, other not little, very important thing to touch on here is toxic league beliefs. And I truly believe this comes from Twitch culture, you know, Twitch TV streamers and content alike. And due to the current league, you know, where we are right now, um, we fail to take responsibility for our in-game behavior and we subscribe to the following. We believe that losers queue exists. We believe that dodging is a should be a th like we believe that dodging is necessary in silver and bronze. We believe in counterpicking and like always having just counterpicking the enemy, going on OPG, looking at the, the or low counter, looking at the counter for that champion, then just picking that champion. We believe that roaming 24-7 is the way to go because you've got inting teammates. We believe that trolls and AFK are ruining all of our games. We think that uh, win rate and MMR and matchmaking are ruining our League of Legends experience and the reason we aren't climbing, which those three, these three terms should not even be in your vocabulary. They, they should be removed from your vocabulary alongside these two and the, basically all of these. Just get rid of all of them. And the next one, meta being important. Again, you shouldn't even, that word shouldn't even be registered in your brain yet. And then build rune optimization. You can do whatever the hell you want. You can do this the stock standard cookie cutter rune page and build as Annie, Electrocute, Ludens. It could be incredibly inefficient, but it does not matter. Okay, I want all of your focus to be on, like, like I said, going back to that previous slide, focusing on doing the bare basics, the fundamentals, like I mentioned, focusing on your CS, getting good quality resets, that sort of thing, the opportunities will present themselves. If you find yourself subscribing to any of these sorts of things, you believe they're a problem, you feel like you should be doing any of them, um, they take up a lot of your brain power, anything, just, I don't know how else to put it, it's a complete and utter waste of time. It is so far from where you, what you need to be thinking on, it's unbelievable. It's probably the worst thing. The, if you're thinking about any of these, you are so far off track. I don't know how I said what. You are so far off track. So please, please, please don't waste any, a single minute thinking about a single one of these things. Now, the importance of teaching yourself. So again, I get asked often why I don't coach below gold, nor do I recommend getting coaching. I see coaching content. Um, on YouTube, you know, silver player getting coached, iron player getting coached, bronze player, whatever it is. And I always look at it, and I'm thinking to myself, something about this just doesn't sit well with me. And I, I, I've really kind of gone deeper on this, and I've asked myself, okay, wh why doesn't this sit well with me? Well, why don't I agree with this? And this is it. If you don't know how to problem solve and figure out a way to get to gold, then I am worried that you won't have the skill set required to get through gold anyway. It won't matter. If I help you and yes, you somehow get to gold through coaching a shit ton of coaching sessions, you're probably not going to be able to teach yourself to get out of gold regardless. Um, so the way I view it, it's like, okay, it's like bowling, for example. You know in bowling, the bowling alley, and you have like those like... Those, uh, those things on the side so your ball can't go down. The way I view it is like coaching in bronze and silver is kind of like you're playing bowling with those things up. 
And in a way, you're not really playing the game. And so, like, you can throw the bowling ball however you want, and you're still going to get the result. You're still going to get to gold in a way, even though it's probably not an accurate uh, an accurate analogy because a lot of people still won't get to gold. But let's just say that happens. When I remove those gutter guards and I put them them down, you start to bowl. And what you've been doing before, it's not going to work. So when when the when the when the assistance is gone, if you don't know how to actually get the result anymore, it's not going to work out well. So the way I view it is getting to gold is kind of like the barrier to entry. It basically tells me you have enough motivation, enough care, enough passion to actually want to improve at the game. Look, I could probably theoretically imp- increase the speed of the climb, but in the process, I will likely overcomplicate it for you. And I'm going to take away something very special from you because I feel as though the, the journey from you know iron to gold is should be one of the most fun experiences of your entire league career learning the basics of the game and figuring out what all the champions do and understanding just the real basics of the game is fun. I would, I would actually give any amount of money to go back and try and relearn the game. Like there's an innocence to it and and, and we're just taking it away from you. I want you to learn how to get to gold by yourself. And there's a feel part of, there's a feeling part of that learning experience that is very important. I don't want to take that away from you. So look, if you are in silver and bronze and you are contemplating getting coaching, I I strongly recommend against it. Um, I don't think it's worth your time. I don't think you're going to get value for money. And you might, even if, even if you are the most busy person on the planet and you really need to get to gold or you just don't have much time, I, I guarantee you doing it by yourself will both be way more rewarding. It's going to set you up with, with better quality habits heading into the future. And just, it's just going to be more fun. So please um, don't overcomplicate the process. Now, I want to give some practical in-game advice. In order of priority, this is what is important to focus on if you're in silver and bronze. Learn how to CS effectively. Being able to look at both of my minion HP values as well as the enemy HP and minion HP values. And that's going to give you a guideline. Okay, when can I walk up and CS? When are they going to walk up and CS? And if I know when they're going to walk up and CS, I can look for a good quality trade. And just, the, just being able to direct your focus on both of the minion HP values, I think it's very important because that is that is the crux of League of Legends. And this will only be able to be a thing once you have champion mastery because you won't have to be thinking about your own champion. The next one is identifying when to reset both uh, based off of resources and gold. If you're low on resources, you're probably going to have to reset. You have no pots, you probably have to reset. If you have a lot of gold, you definitely have to reset. Knowing how to effectively combo and take good trades with your champion as well as grow awareness towards your R cooldown. The amount of times that I've seen um, like a Diana or an Orianna and they go in and they take all these fights and they don't have ultimate, it's like, just chill, dude. You don't have to do anything. Relax. Wait for your ultimate to come back up, then we can make the play. Just simple awareness of your ultimate cooldown is very important. Looking at the minimap in between waves and warding whenever you are pushing up. Keep it super, super simple. But this this simple advice piece of advice here, looking at the minimap in between waves can be an absolute game changer. Basic team fighting grouping. And again, I don't really want to talk too much about this, but I will tie it back to that other thing before with the champion mastery. Once you get a lot of games on your champion, you're going to start to see the trends. Interesting. Hmm. My champion can't flank or my champion is very good front to back or my champion really needs to flank. You're going to start to see the trends with, you know, your basic team fighting, what certain champions do to you. Now for drills, again, another question I get asked quite often for mid lane specifically, I think the Lux bot drill can actually increase your CS comfortability a lot. I made a video on this. I'll link this in the description as well. For those of you who are, who are interested in really improving upon this CSing and things like that. But I want you to learn the rest of the basics somewhat intuitively, right? And and this is going to run, I would say this little sentence here kind of runs counter to what I've been saying for the rest of the the, the video the, so far is, um, look, I want you to a certain extent test and fail, but I don't want you to over test in a way. It, it's, it's very difficult to articulate. Like you need to definitely test hypotheses and push your limits to to learn what works and what doesn't work. But as long as you know that, okay, given my learning, what I got from this situation, maybe it's best in this situation not to do anything. Maybe the best course of action right here is to simply not make a play. And that sentence, and I remember I said this in a coaching session once in the Midland Academy. I said, look, you know what the best course of action is right now? It is to simply not do anything. 
And that blew that person's mind. They're like, holy shit, you're actually right. If I just sit here and CS and just wait, maybe get a warden to hover out of vision, that was the best cause of action. So look, I want you to make of this as you will. And I think a lot of you, if you've been following my content, you know where I'm coming from. You've got to walk that tightrope between pushing your limits and learning, but also understanding that you don't need to do that in the, in the grand scheme of winning that game. It's not really necessary. Okay. Now some interesting findings with um, a lot of the most recently promoted gold clients we have in the Midland Academy, they all, they have all actually experienced a very similar thing. They all kind of just like randomly shot up in rank, right? They, and when I asked them, I said, well, what, what felt different? What did you do differently when you were climbing from silver to gold? And they said things like, I don't know. I mean, I just didn't feel like I was doing anything differently. I mean, I kind of just like played a lot of my champion. I didn't do anything crazy. And I kind of just randomly started winning a bunch of games. And I contribute this to understanding the loser's game mentality, not over, overly forcing players anymore, allowing the enemy just to f crumble in front of you, honing in on one champion where the, ma the champion mastery slowly begins to click. And again, this is all going to be intuitively and gaining confidence, not through shifting champions all the time. And we know, again, something that I've said a lot throughout my content is league is a confidence-based game. And if you're shifting champions all the time, you're going to have a lot of painful experiences. And these painful experiences are going to add up to you playing worse. So simply just honing in on a champion can significantly increase your confidence as well. Now, last piece of advice, guys. If you don't believe me with any of this so far, I'm going to give you um, one actionable tip. And it is to review your deaths, okay? All I want you to do is look at all of your deaths in the first 15 minutes of a game. And I want you to follow this little diagram here. I wrote an article actually in the Midland Academy talking about how to review your deaths. And all I want you to do over the course of maybe two weeks, I want you to go through and tally every single game. What, how many deaths within a game fall into each category? Was it a gank? Was it a skirmish? Was it just mis-execution? You misplayed it? Was it a compensation death? What exactly, where are your deaths adding up? And over time, you're going to start to realize that there's trends and there's going to be specific areas that, you're, that are really holding you back. And then this is where you can start to look into it into, in your review. And this process alone of looking at your deaths, even if you don't really understand the core reason of your deaths, is going to bring a lot of shit to the surface. This is going to be an absolute game changer for a lot of you guys. And the parting, parting advice here for all of you, I just want you to all to have fun, all right? Like, again, I wish I could go back in time and relearn the game and wish I knew nothing in, in a way. I would say the two, the, the times where you have the most fun in League of Legends is when you know the least and when you, when you know the most. So when you're a challenger and you you know everything, basically everything about the game and you're purely refining your execution, that is very, very, uh, it's very fulfilling and it's very fun. And at the very beginning, when you know nothing and you're just like an innocent little baby and you're just trying to just having a crack, that is also a lot of fun. So I would say just enjoy it. Don't overcomplicate it. So hopefully, look, hopefully this puts you guys on the right path. If there's anything you are a little bit confused about or need a little bit more um, clarification, just send me a message or add, add a comment below and I'll try to get to as many of you as possible. But good luck on your climb to gold. And I'm very confident anyone, I guarantee anyone can do it because I think anyone can actually reach a diamond. It is just a matter of time. Enjoy the process, guys, and have fun. Cheers.